The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases have been rising steadily. Know that our government stands committed to curtailing the spread of this vicious disease. Within the next 30 minutes, we look at further measures being implemented to reinforce their position. Your life, my life, the lives of our friends, families and neighbours matter. And the sooner we are able to stop the spread of COVID-19, the sooner our economy will return to normal. Think about it. And where we fall short, let's pledge to do what's right, even if it is uncomfortable. I am Adrian Atkinson, and you're watching Jamaica Magazine. Agriculture and fisheries is big business. Get formalized this year. Be among 100 farmers and fisheries producers who will benefit from a developmental project funded by the International Labor Organization and implemented by the government of Jamaica. Whether you're male or female, we want to help you. Young farmers, there's a special place for you too. Apply at any RADA or JBDC office island-wide and jbdc.net. Deadline, March 22. Agriculture and fisheries is big business. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, March 4, 2021. Jamaica is now to receive its first shipment of COVID-19 vaccines on Monday, March 8, a few days later than the March 4 arrival date that was announced earlier. The Ministry of Health and Wellness says it has just received the updated arrival information from the Government of India, which is donating the vaccines. The shipment includes 50,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. This first batch will be followed by the March 11 arrival of 14,400 doses of vaccine procured under the COVAX facility. Another 1.8 million doses procured under a deal with the African Medical Supply Platform will also follow. In the meantime, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the implementation of the National COVID-19 Vaccination Plan should begin 48 hours after the arrival of the first shipment of vaccines next Monday. The vaccination of Jamaicans will proceed through an appointment system guided by the principles of human well-being, equal respect, national equity, legitimacy and reciprocity. The implementation plan is an aggregation, ladies and gentlemen, of the micro-plans that have been developed at the regional and parish levels, it takes into account the appointment system. Dr. Tufton was speaking at his ministry's COVID-19 update and conversations held on Tuesday. Permanent Secretary Dunstan Bryan says the ministry will make a public call for persons to make an appointment for vaccination based on their priority and select grouping. Application for appointments will be facilitated via the Ministry's toll-free line 1-888-1-LOVE, the websites of the Ministry of Health and the regional health authorities, or by visiting any parish health department. If you wish to get an appointment, you must start the appointment process five days before your, you want your actual appointment. And when you ask for your appointment, you have to provide certain information, your age, date of birth, your area of work, comorbidity, your allergies, um, your address, the venue that you wish to be vaccinated at, your telephone number and email. He says applicants will receive a notification three days before their vaccination appointment date. They will be notified of the date, venue and time for receiving the vaccine. A second appointment will be made for persons receiving two-dose vaccines. The appointment process will support a daily vaccination schedule that will be made available. The Negril Aerodrome is now operating with an improved runway and new fire station. The 660-meter runway was resurfaced at a cost of $30 million, while $17 million was spent to construct a new fire station at the facility. Transport Minister Robert Montague officially opened the runway and fire station last week. He said the investment was needed as the 14 aerodromes in Jamaica provide commuters with the opportunity to save time and money to move across the island. It is money well spent and we intend to continue to invest more and more into Negril because this is the fastest growing aerodrome and we will continue that investment. 
He revealed that engineering works had started towards constructing a new terminal building at the facility, while plans are in place to rehabilitate another 151 meters of the runway and a new fire truck is to be acquired for the newly opened station. Meanwhile, the transport minister says government is currently purchasing a new satellite positioning system to enhance the country's capacity to track aircraft. Minister Montague says the new system will expand the country's aerodromes and allow for increased earnings from aircraft transiting over the country's airspace. By acquiring this new system, it will allow us to position planes 10 miles apart rather than 4. So it will increase dramatically the amount of planes we can take across going from North America to South and South to North. The minister was speaking at the recent opening of the Negril Aerodrome Fire Station and resurfacing off the runway. 172 farmers on 686 hectares of land in southern Clarendon can now benefit from the newly upgraded Ebony Park Irrigation Facility. The National Irrigation Commission, NIC's solar retrofitted system, was commissioned last week after $32 million in upgrading works. It will self-generate 75% of the required energy for the pump station, resulting in a 43% or $4.8 million annual reduction in operational costs for the service to farmers. Agriculture Minister Floyd Green says the project is one of five solar systems that have been completed by the NIC as it looks to increase its use of renewable energy and limit environmental pollution. This project will reduce our carbon emissions by 145 metric tons of carbon dioxide per annum. So we are in a real way on the positive side of climate change. Minister Green says another irrigation system to serve 795 farmers in the parish under the Southern Plains Agricultural Development Project is now at the completion stage. And finally, residents in and around St. Catherine will soon have access to improved drainage and water mains as government is to shortly commence its content water supply project. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement during his recent tour of the Kingston and St. Andrew Transmission Main Upgrade Project. He says the project will largely include PVC pipe laying in the Rio Cobra River. So it's not just laying the, the pipes, it is also building out the supply. And we are also looking at other areas in and around the corporate area and in St. Catherine, right across Jamaica actually, that will increase our water supply so that when we go into the dry months and we have uh, extreme shifts in our rainfall, then we should be able to have our lives as we normally would expect it without the disruption of lack of, of, of water. Prime Minister Holness says discussions on the subject are now at the final stages where it is to be signed off by Cabinet. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. The numbers keep climbing, and yet, some of you are still complaining about curfew times. Is that being selfish or are you being smart? You continue to blame the government, stating they are not doing enough. But the big question is, are you doing your part to help decrease the spread? The unfortunate reality is that far too many people refuse to take the coronavirus pandemic seriously until they or someone they love gets infected. Now this is what we do not want, and I don't believe I can stress this enough. Wear your mask, sanitize. Of course, we love to hug and socialize, but just ease off some of that right now. Not just for your safety, but also for others. It look hard for your relatives to be home doing all they need to in order not to catch the virus, and you out on the road being reckless and carrying it right home to them. Each one of us needs to help during this fight against COVID-19, as we work to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business in a healthy environment. In order to build forward and stronger together, we must adhere to the COVID-19 containment measures. That's the only way we are going to get past this phase of the pandemic and get all sectors of the economy up and running. Let's go over these measures. 
the pressures that we are seeing on our health system clearly indicate the need for decisive action. The curfew hour will remain at 8 p.m. nightly to 5 a.m. the following morning until March 23rd, 2021 at 5 a.m. Zoos, parks, gyms, attractions, and bars will be closed at 6 p.m. And this will continue in effect until the 22nd of March, 2021. Let me be clear now, only students who will be sitting exit examinations, meaning for the primary level would be the PEP, and for the high school level would be CSEC and CAPE. So only those students would be permitted to have face-to-face -face instruction, and this will be the case from the 1st of March until the 22nd of March. The same rules that we are applying to the public schools will be applied to the private schools. Churches will be directed to engage in only online services for the next three weeks, except that we will permit 10 members to be within the church space to deliver the ceremony and do the necessary uh, management of the communication equipment and so forth. We will continue to allow weddings, except that the cap that we had placed on weddings, which was 50, we have now halved that, so only 25 persons. Early last year, we instituted a measure which was work from home. The measure in the current orders encourages uh, firms to make it possible for their employers, their employees rather, to work from home where possible, where convenient. We are changing that order now. Starting Thursday, March 4, 2021, there must be a work from home arrangement in the public sector. And the permanent secretaries are directed to have only persons who work in critical service delivery and where the nature of the work performed requires that the job functions be performed at the physical office location. The new measures as it relates to funeral, effective the 8th of March to the 22nd of March, funerals and burials will be prohibited. We have given a directive to the municipal authorities that no burial orders should be issued. And let me explain what this means. So from the 1st to the 7th, funerals that were already scheduled, those funerals can go ahead, but they must conform with the rules under the Disaster Risk Management Act. 10 mourners and five um, inclusive clergy and attendants. 15, no more. The public gathering limit will remain at 10 persons until March 22nd, 2021. We did not seek to adjust that down any further. If we find that we are not hitting the plateau that we are expecting by virtue of the present measures, then you could see this number go down to five. Public beaches, which are not under the direct control and management of an entity or authority, and rivers are closed until March 22nd, 2021. Everyone coming into Jamaica must present a negative COVID-19 test, which was conducted within 72 hours prior to the date of travel and they must present this at check-in. We continue to restrict flights coming directly from the UK, and this will continue until the 22nd of March, 2021. We have to take greater responsibility for our actions in the management 
of the pandemic. The government has to act in these ways, but these ways also kill the economy. If you act responsibly, then we will use these measures less. The country's confirmed cases and death toll for COVID-19 have been climbing and putting a strain on the health sector. We can reduce the impact by understanding the effects of the virus on our body. Here's a reminder. viruses are a large family of viruses found in both animals and humans. Some infect people and are known to cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS. Research reveals that SARS-CoV was transmitted from civet cats to humans in China in 2002 and MERS-CoV from dromedary camels to humans in Saudi Arabia in 2012. A novel coronavirus, novel meaning new strain of the coronavirus not previously identified in humans, was identified after an outbreak was reported in Wuhan, China in December 2019. It has subsequently spread to a number of other countries through human-to-human -human contact, and the World Health Organization has since officially named it COVID-19. The incubation period for viruses is the time between infection and the start of clinical symptoms of the disease. Based on information from other coronavirus diseases, such as MERS and SARS, the incubation period of the 2019 novel coronavirus, or COVID-19, is determined to be up to 14 days. As with other respiratory illnesses, this disease can cause mild symptoms, including a runny nose, sore throat, cough, and fever. For coronavirus generally, the person is most infectious when displaying symptoms. It is difficult to identify COVID-19 based on symptoms alone, as they are typically the same as infections of the flu or cold. A laboratory test is therefore needed to confirm if someone has the coronavirus. The infection can be more severe for some persons and can lead to pneumonia or breathing difficulties. More rarely, the disease can be fatal. Older persons and people with pre-existing medical conditions such as asthma, diabetes, and heart disease are deemed more vulnerable to becoming severely ill with the virus. The new coronavirus spreads primarily through contact with an infected person. It spread through respiratory droplets generated when a person coughs or sneezes or through droplets of saliva or discharge from the nose. To prevent spread, it's important that everyone practice good respiratory hygiene. It's a similar respiratory precaution as we would take for influenza. <coughs> for example, sneeze or cough into a flexed elbow or use a tissue and discard it immediately into a closed bin. Washing your hands frequently with soap and water or using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer eliminates the virus if it is on your hands. Washing of hands is very, very important because any kind of droplets that get on your hand, you can transfer to your face and you can therefore get it into your ear passages or into the eyes and cause an infection. When someone who is infected with a respiratory disease like COVID-19 coughs or sneezes, that person projects small droplets containing the virus. If you are too close, you can breathe in the virus. The general precautions in terms of making sure that you keep your distance. Keeping this distance between yourself and other people, particularly those who are coughing, sneezing and have a fever, helps to prevent those persons who don't have the virus from getting it. If you are sick, to stay away from other persons, that means not going to work or school. Someone who is coughing and sneezing should wear an approved mask where necessary. Data collected by the WHO so far suggests that the coronavirus may survive a few hours on surfaces and applying disinfectants to surfaces can kill the virus, making it no longer possible to infect people in this way. 
To avoid getting infected, do not touch your eyes, nose or mouth after touching any surface. Inform healthcare providers of any overseas travel in the 14 days before your symptoms developed or if you've been in close contact with someone who has been sick with respiratory symptoms. To date, there's no specific medicine recommended to prevent or treat the new coronavirus or COVID-19. But persons infected with the virus should receive appropriate care to relieve and treat symptoms, and those with severe illness should receive optimized supportive care. Remember, practice good respiratory and hand hygiene. The first technique that will be explained today is the technique of boiling. What we advise is for you to obtain clean water, water that you can see through. Then you would place it into a pot, you would cover the pot and allow for it to boil. Allow for rolling boil for about 5 minutes. Then it would look something like this. Then after you would have achieved the 5 minutes of rolling boil. Then you'd allow for it to cool. Then you would place it inside of another container. Use an airtight container to store your water. If the water is not used within a few weeks, be sure to carry out additional treatment of the water that may include boiling the water once more. In this, the final segment of today's show, we look at how the Universal Service Fund is expanding internet service to increase the level of connectivity within communities to benefit especially students and the educational system at large. Today, we not only celebrate the opening of a new facility, but the impact we envisage it will have on the residents. At a cost of $5.1 million, this resource center was brought to its refined state and is now retrofitted with computers and a printer. This brings me great joy, as students will be able to join their school sessions online and respond to the various demands that come with learning. To the people of Stony Hill, this is for you. This is for your children, especially in this time when children need access online. And I hope you take good care of it and use it in the proper way. I recognize many families still may not have a device and we are still working. The government is working to make sure that our children are equipped with devices. But if you don't, there are 11 computers here to support you and I'm urging the principal to make use of that. With the COVID-19 pandemic at hand, this could not have come at a better time. If you look at the records, it will show that, well, I know from my records, that over 70% of our students since March last year have not been accessing online platforms for classes. With a resource center like this being opened this morning, of course, it will open the way for many students in the Stone Hill community to do the same. So I am sure that 70% will be reduced drastically. Universal Service Fund as a partner came on board and we did what was necessary to make sure that the people of Stony Hill now more than ever have access to the internet superhighway. There are more Wi-Fi hotspots coming to West Rural St. Andrew. And yes, I did put it in. Lawrence Tavern will have such. Red Hill Center will have such. And of course, here in Rocky Valley, you have this um, center here to access your Wi-Fi connection. This project could be more timely because our children needed ways to get onto the 
classes, the Zoom classes, the log on this, the Google search. You have the opportunity now. You have no more excuses why you can't be online on a class. Everyone with the password Rocky Valley Hotspot at 123, get ready. Google, Snapchat, Twitter, Google Class, everything is at your doorstep. We are a country that wants to ensure that we are knowledge based and we have brought it to your doorsteps. Enjoy. want to be treated if you are diagnosed with COVID-19. Not like this. We talk home wicked and we fit dead and they behave like I am the one that created the virus. All my friends as well that were positive, them going through even worse than what I'm going through. Persons are calling police on them as well. Do not allow your fear of COVID-19 to rob you of your humanity. There is no need to shun or victimize persons with the disease or those on the front line. To mistreat persons that do have it, it's not a good feeling. We don't call this on ourselves. We really need to cut the hate and work together as a country, as communities to overcome. Let us be understanding with those affected and support each other. Be kind. End the stigma. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll bring you another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm, and while you're online, send your feedback to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.